Well, I am sitting today with Professor Gloria House, who is Professor of, of Humanities and African and African American Studies at the University of Michigan Dearborn, and who is also a leading scholar, poet, and activist. Very generous. <laughs> and uh, it, it is really a treat, Gloria, to be able to sit and talk today about some things that you know very well, and I think that many listeners and viewers will be very interested in, interested in learning about. So it's really a pleasure, and I appreciate you taking some time Thank with you me for today. inviting me. Mm -hmm. I am very interested to go back to the beginning. Um, I, I know that your involvement in the civil rights movement goes way back, and I'd like to to go back go to your back. time at, at Berkeley and then just kind of move forward to the to uh, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Mm -hmm. And um, I've got a couple other topics as well, but if we could start there, maybe you could All just right, talk sure. a little mm -hmm. bit about that. Um, well. Uh, I was a graduate student at Berkeley in those early years of the 60s. I graduated, uh, I finished as an undergraduate in 61, and went to England and Paris for a while, and um, was really sort of awakened uh, politically while I was in Paris, because um, this was during the period that the Algerians were carrying on their own national independence struggle. and. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a great deal of uh, discussion of what was going on in the African continent and I met many African students while I was there in Paris and they really sort of opened my eyes to political struggle around the world and um, by the time I got back to Berkeley to do graduate school um, I was very much uh, aware of the United States role abroad of what was going on in our civil rights movement in the States and um, beginning my activist years. Um, I got back to Berkeley 63 I think it was but um, in 64 um, there was the free speech movement on the Berkeley campus and uh, many of the students who were involved in that uh, especially Mario Savio, had been south to the Southern Civil Rights Movement the summer before. So were busy um, really sharing their experience with others on campus and fundraising on behalf of the Southern Movement. And that brought down the university administration on, on these activists. And um, the university administration called in um, security forces from all the neighboring towns. Some students participated in a sit-in in the administration building. When I left campus in the evening, some students were going in. By the time uh, I woke up the next morning, um, the sit-in had gone on overnight, and the campus administrators had called in the police from all around. Actually, my mother woke me up saying, oh, I'm so glad to find you still in your apartment. I thought you were in Sproul Hall. <laughs> And I said, why, what's going on in Sproul Hall, Mom? She said, well, the police are arresting students. Of course, I rushed to campus to see um, students being dragged down Sproul Hall steps into, you know, wagons and hauled off and um, joined all the other um, students who were appalled by this in organizing a campus-wide strike. I was a teaching assistant at the time, mm -hmm. and I became part of the striking teaching assistants. Um, it was a very successful um, strike. We did close the university down temporarily. We did win the support of major unions uh, who had workers on campus. Um, and we won the first uh, union for graduate students, I think, in the history of the country. So it was a um, it was a successful campaign on the part of students. We did make some changes in the way the university was governed, and we um, affirmed that students have the right to be politically engaged and to bring that engagement onto campus and you know to be involved in that way. But that was again a turning point for me um, in terms of understanding that um, with conviction and with the unity of a certain number of people. Not a lot of people, I discovered. It didn't require, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands. It required people of real commitment and conviction working together, strategizing, um, challenging each other to make change. Um, 
and I think all of us who participated in that movement learned those lessons. We also learned the lesson that you there are some losses in every struggle. You may lose friends, you may lose scholarships, you, you know, your grades may go down, um, that um, some sacrifices are mm -hmm. made as well. So that was 64. By the spring of 65, this is the fall of 64, if, I'm, if my history is correct here. By, uh, in the spring of 65, I learned that a group of students uh, from San Francisco State were collecting books and were planning to travel to Selma and set up a freedom school. And I had watched the Southern Movement and been very emotionally involved in the Southern Movement, um, especially around the um, uh, catastrophe or disaster of the uh, murder of the three civil rights workers. That's something that had really been in my consciousness. And of course the the bombing of the church, you know, these were things that you didn't forget about. And for me, they just, you know, they stayed in my consciousness. So when I learned that these students were going to go south and set up a freedom school, I thought, aha, this is my opportunity, you know, to be useful in the south, uh, to make a contribution to the movement. And I agreed to go. That's how I ended up in Selma in 65. And we set up our school in a little house that we rented right on the um, fringe of the housing project in Selma. The housing project was the sort of context for Brown Chapel, which was the church where all the movement activity took place, where Dr. King spoke when he came to town, where SNCC held rallies. Um, so, of course, the children who came to our Freedom School were the children who had been involved in all those marches and um, brought all that energy and excitement and enthusiasm and absolute passion for change, right? And mm -hmm. um, I try to convey to people just what it was like to see children who were 9, 10, 11, 12 with that feeling of insistence, we will be free. You know, we are going to be free. Um, no fear. You know, the adults might have been fearful, but the children, no. Mm -hmm. And then you can see those photographs, you know, children marching with Dr. King, children being, uh, children greeting Dr. King. Um, so those were the children in our Freedom School. A very inspiring uh, group of children. Um, some of them, uh, now grown up, have written about the movement. Selma, Lord Selma, was a book written by one of those mm -hmm. uh, who was a child in our Freedom School, and I think many people will recognize that title because it's been made into a movie as well. So that's how I got south. <laughs>